So you're wondering how to set up to the golf ball correctly. And I will promise you that whether you're just getting started or whether you are a tour pro, you will pay attention to this for your entire career of playing the game of golf. The setup is gonna be a predictor of what takes place in motion, which is why you have to almost be um, meticulous in, in your address position. And there are some variations, but the variations come in the forms of the human body itself. Some people have arms that are a little bit longer or legs that are a little bit longer. Some people have chests that are a little bit thicker if you've been lifting weights and things like that. So um, there are some alterations, but you're constantly playing, paying attention to how you set up to the golf ball. And I wanna point out a couple of, of very important things to you. First, I have these two yellow sticks, we call them alignment sticks. These are important for you to have and I would suggest having two of them in your bag. And every time you go to practice, what you're gonna do is you're gonna put these down on the ground. You'll put this one down on the ground here that's gonna go right along the line of your, of your toes, okay? Now, this word alignment is something that you're gonna pay a close attention to. And I'll talk to you about alignment in a second, but let's go down the line here. So when I get set up, what I am first starting to pay attention to is with my feet perpendicular to that alignment stick on the ground, I wanna make sure that my toes are the same distance from that alignment stick, right? So when I get into here, that's pretty good. Those are pretty close to being um, the same distance from the stick. Now. From there, now let's go face on here, Gibbsy. And what we're gonna see is, we're gonna see some um, alteration to the foot position. Because I don't want your feet to be perpendicular to that alignment stick on the ground. I want them flared open a little bit. The, the back foot is flared open just a, a, a fraction. And so what I would say is, is that if your um, middle toe and your foot is there, you're gonna move it over so it's now to the big toe. So this is a simple thing, this is a simple adjustment. There's the middle of my, my toe box, right where the middle toe is, and I'm gonna move that over so now it's in line with that alignment stick is in line with the big toe. So you're just moving it two toes op open, not a tremendous amount. With the other foot, what I want you to do is I want you to do the same thing, only this time when you open this up, I want it to be the entire toe box open to that address position. So we go here, and then open that up and now it's right in line with that, with that instep right there. Do it one more time for you. So there it is there. Now you open it up so that entire toe box is outside of that. And that's how you're gonna set that up. Now, what that's gonna do is because of the, the fact that the lead foot is flared out more than the, the trail foot, it's gonna give the illusion when you go down the line here, Gibbsy, that the, the feet are now open to that alignment stick on the ground. But that's the illusion, because what you're really looking at, go back to the down the line, is the heels. And so if I put this on my heels right here, you're gonna see when I get out that those are pretty much parallel to one another, okay? When you start paying attention to the alignment of the, the feet, the heels are something that you're gonna wanna pay attention to, not necessarily the toes, okay? So as you flare those out, it's gonna look like it's a little open and that's exactly what we want it to look like. So we get in here like this, you get your distance from that. And at this particular point, by the way, you don't need a golf club or a golf ball. All you're working on is getting your feet in the right spot. So you're here, and then you flare that out just a little bit and you flare that out a little bit more, okay? Now, here's the other curveball to this. This distance of the, the feet is gonna change with the golf club that you have. So if I have a wedge or a, a pitching wedge, nine iron, something like that, my feet will be a little bit closer together. And when I have a driver, my feet are gonna be a little bit wider apart. Okay, and I'll explain that to you in a moment, but just need to understand, it's not the same width of stance with every single golf club. It's gonna change, it varies. And I would love to tell you that there's an absolute for each individual, there's not. I've seen great players play with their feet like this with a six iron, and I've seen great players play with their feet like that, so it varies. And again, body type has a lot to do with this. If you have long legs, you're probably gonna have a little wider stance. If you have 
Shorter legs, you can play maybe a little bit more narrow because what happens when you spread your, your feet apart is your height changes, right? So if I, if I stand up like this, my head's right about at the top of, the, of that Morgan Franklin sign. If I spread them out like this now, what you can see is, is that now I've shrunk. Now I'm below that, that Morgan Franklin. So as I start to take my feet and spread them out, I get a little bit shorter, okay? And what happens when you grab a pitching wedge is you bend over more. So now as you bend over more, and this is an important part about when we start talking about um, this setup position, the more you bend over, the more restriction you put into the hips. And so one of the ways that you free up your hips is get your feet closer together. If I spread my feet wide like this, I don't have the same range of motion in my hips. When I get them where they're close together, now I have a real range of motion. This is something that I would practice with because you wanna make sure that you understand range of motion. So now let me get my six iron because I wanna talk to you about the purpose of, of what we do and then we'll get into this uh, a little bit more in depth. What I'm trying to do in my address position is allow a freedom of rotation. A golf swing is not a lateral thing. I'm not sliding my body laterally. What I'm doing is I'm rotating my body around. So the golf club, if you go down the line here, the golf club is gonna move around me here. I'm not gonna take the club and move it like this. My hands are not gonna stay, let's say they're over that alignment stick. They're not gonna stay over that alignment stick the whole swing. They're going to get inside of the alignment stick. And in order for that to happen, the body has to turn. The hips have to turn, the chest has to turn, the shoulders are turning. There's a lot of rotation that goes on in this. And what prevents rotation or restricts it, restricts it is the width of stance. So if I get really, really wide here, I can't turn my hips thoroughly. And so what we do is, is we go, okay, if I have a short club, I need my feet to be closer together because when I bend over more in the down the line view, if I bend over a lot, now I have a, a restriction again. So restriction is gonna come when I'm bent over a lot or in the face on when my feet are wide. And so what I wanna do is I wanna set the bend in the hip. I wanna set that based on the club that I have and then also too, the restriction that is established by my setup position, whether it's the bend or it's the width of the stance. So when I'm sitting here with a, a pitching wedge, and I'll get a pitching wedge for you. So when I set up here with a pitching wedge, now what happens is, is that I have a lot of bend. Down the line, I have a lot of bend here. And you can see that angle that I have in my back is, is, is quite steep here. I'm bent over quite a bit. If I go to the six iron, I'm not bent over quite so much. I'm a little bit taller right here. And as a result, in the face on view, when, I'm, when I have a six iron, this is sort of the middle of the road stance with, with your feet. And they're prob, and, and again, this is just a, a random thing to say, because um, I don't know exactly what body type we're dealing with, but they're about the width of the shoulders. Okay, they're about the width of the shoulders. You don't have to be absolute. There's not like, okay, I need, 20 inches in between my heels, it, it, it varies. So what you want is you want, okay, I want about the width of my shoulders. So when I get set up with a six iron, they're about the width of the shoulders. When I have a pitching wedge, they're just a little bit inside of that. When I have a driver, they're a little bit greater than that. I like to talk about, um, you know, the, 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 the movement of a foot. So if I'm, if I'm got a pitching wedge, I'm here. If I take my feet and I move that one footprint this way and one footprint that way. Now I'm about with a driver. And so when I go from a pitching wedge to a six iron, it's about a half a foot, the width of the foot, okay? So that's what I'm, I'm kind of working with in that um, address position, if you will, with the feet. But what I'm really trying to do in the setup itself is I wanna make sure that I allow maximum rotation from my body, that includes hips and shoulders. And so if I'm with a pitching wedge and I'm bent over a lot, I've got restriction and now I need some freedom and the narrowness of the stance will give me freedom, okay? If I'm standing a little bit taller, like with a driver, now I have maximum freedom. Well, now I need a little restriction 
So I'm going to get a little bit wider with, the, with my feet. And that's going to allow me still to be able to get my hips to, to turn the amount that I want them to turn, the shoulders to, to turn the amount that I want them to turn. So that setup position is going to be vital. And now I want to talk about one final thing. And that's something that we call alignment. So in the down the line view, when I start talking about alignment, what I'm talking about is this. And this is, again, we're making little rough estimates. This is not absolute perfection. There's, there's some plus minus in this. But when you get going here, the toe line, or that yellow line on the ground, should about be parallel to the knee line. That's one of the alignment lines. And then you have the, the hip line, which is, again, about parallel to that on the ground. And then you have the shoulder line, and the shoulder line needs to be about parallel to the one on the ground. Now, here's what happens to us when we go wrong. We tend to get our shoulders, particularly as we start taking the ball position and moving it forward, which is a different topic of conversation. What we tend to do is we gradually, as the club gets longer, so when we go from a pitching wedge to a six iron, then a six iron to a fairway wood, and then a fairway wood to a driver, our shoulders tend to get open. So if we go down the line, my shoulders get open like this. Now they're to the pull side or to the, for the right-handed golfer to the left. My shoulders are here. Now my hips are gonna be a little bit um, open as well, not as much as the shoulders, but they're gonna be more open than the knees, which will be a little bit more open than the, the feet being square. Knees are a little open. Hips get more open than that. Shoulders get more open than that. And what I caution you to is paying attention to this because this will create some real problems in your golf swing. So when you're, when you're paying attention to a proper setup position, what I want you to pay attention to is the width of the stance and then also to the alignment of the lines of the body, the shoulders, the hips, the knees, and the feet. Now, finally, we get into weight distribution or the, the balance here. And so when we go down the line, here's what I want you to pay attention to. I want you to pay attention to the front of your shoulder. So when I set up here with the front of my shoulder, that, that alignment stick is roughly hanging down, and it's roughly in the, the, it's not quite in the middle of the feet. It's sort of towards the balls of the feet, just because of the, the way my body is. Everybody's a little bit different. When you drop down into the bends, what I want you to do is you're, you're thinking about bending two things. You're going to bend in the hips and you're going to bend in the knees. So what I want you to do is I want you to bend in the hips by letting the hips go backwards as the shoulders go down. So when the front of the shoulders, when I go down, they now move, it now moves out over the toe box. Now again, this will depend on the individual. If you have very, very big feet and you bend, probably not gonna get to the toe box. If you're very, very tall, and you have a big, like a long torso, probably gets out there. If you have a shorter torso, it doesn't get out there. Everybody's a little bit different. But what it is, for me, is it's right over the toes of my feet. And what you're also gonna notice too is that the knees are inside that, that front of the shoulder. Now, if I add a lot of bend in the knees here like this, now all of a sudden you can see the knees get out over the toes. And if I hang this alignment stick down, it's gonna hit that. I don't want that. So what I want is a bend in the hips and a break in the knees. I just want a break. So when I bend, my legs actually go back and now we just put a little, a little break in them. And what I like to see is, I like to see the front part of my knees out over about the balls of the feet. That's what I'm looking at. So I take my shoulders, I bend in the hips, I break the knees, and now all of a sudden I'm here. And this is gonna be true with a pitching wedge and with a six iron. So when I get set up with a, six, with a, with a pitching wedge like this, I'll put my six iron against my hip, I still have the same thing. When I go to a six iron, now I'm a little bit taller. Again, same thing. And what you're gonna feel in the address position is you're gonna feel your weight right in the, the arches. I don't want you to have your weight out on your toes where your toes are grabbing the ground and your heels are up in the air. And I also don't want you to have your heels in the ground and your toes up in the air. Great shot there, Gibbsy. What I want you to feel is I want you to feel your feet 
on the ground. And what I like to imagine is this. I like to imagine that on the bottom of my shoe, I've got suction cups. And those suction cups are on the heels and on the toes, they're equally pressured into the ground. So when I get set into this, this is equally pressured in the ground. I don't want the suction cups and the heels to come up. And when I'm in the heels, I don't want the suction cup and the toes to come up. I want them to both be in there grabbing the ground the same way. Once you've done this, now all of a sudden, you're set up in the right position and ready to make the golf swing and the consistent motion that you're capable of. To improve all parts of your game, subscribe to my channel and click the link below.